Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365, where I demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to bulk and roll devices into Microsoft Intune or Endpoint Manager via group policy. This is extremely powerful because number one, you do not have to be a local admin or require any end user interaction to get these devices enrolled. And number two, you can take your devices that are already domain joined and simply sync them up into Azure AD and get them enrolled into the Intune MDM service at the same time. So this is going to be highly important as we look to full cloud management for our devices here in the near term. One thing that I will not be covering in this video that is part of the setup process you should already have in place is just Azure AD Connect with your users syncing into Microsoft 365. I will be covering the hybrid configuration settings as part of that wizard in this video, but I will not be covering the holistic setup of that actual tool. Before I get into today's video, if you want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. So there's a couple of settings that I want to showcase for you guys that you want to make sure are in place to enroll the devices properly into this solution via group policy. The first thing that you'll do and what I like to do is come into the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. I'll come under Azure Active Directory, go under Devices, Device Settings here, and simply just make sure that this is set to all. It's not selective or anything like that. You could silo this to certain users who are just your users who have an Intune license, but I like to set it to all just to have that in place. The next thing you'll want to do, as I just mentioned there, you'll want to make sure that all of your users have some type of Intune licensing that are going to be part of this. I'd recommend doing this as a POC between a user and a group policy object that you scope uniquely to a single device or a couple devices just to see that all the way through. But you want to make sure, like Business Premium here has Intune, that that's assigned appropriately to the user who you're going to test with in this particular case, otherwise this will fail. The other thing down here, this is on by default in newer tenants, but if you have an older tenant that had Microsoft Intune or something like that, you want to come under the mobility section, click on Microsoft Intune, and make sure that this is set to all as well too for the MDM scope and none for the MAM scope. That's important as well for this to actually go through and enroll those devices as corporate owned versus taking a different type of, of policy there. The final setting, you'll go into the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And what I would do is go under Devices, Enroll Devices, Enrollment Restrictions, and ensure that for your default device type, you do not have the property set to disallow for Windows MDM platform. You shouldn't. It's really not that huge of a consideration because it's not set up that way by default. It's always on. But I just want to point that out because that could cause some problems for you too, as well too during this setup process. The other thing that I want to mention here that is a consideration, essentially what we're doing with the group policy is that we're taking the user's credentials that they're already signed in with to enroll it in the MDIM solution. The group policy object creates a registry key within their computer and essentially if you have multi-factor authentication on, when it tries to do the auto-enrollment, it will start to fail. And for that user, it makes sense that they would have multi-factor in a lot of these cases. So we need a way to accommodate that. The best way of which you can do that is via conditional access policies. And this is something that I recommend setting up. Otherwise, the user will get a prompt to say that your administrator requires more information and they will be prompted to enter multi-factor authentication information, which is fine, it's just a prompt, and I'll be showing you guys that later. But in order to make this seamless and headless, I really wanted to, to showcase this as far as having a, a group policy uh, without having the end user interact with it. So in this particular case, you could take an existing conditional access policy, or you can create a new one here for uh, Intune, and you could scope this to certain users maybe who are scoped with the Intune licensing, or you could say it's all cloud users. But then under this section, what we're going to do is we're going to exclude, if you have a policy set to enforce MFA on all cloud apps, you may want to exclude this one in particular. So if you search for Intune here, you'll want to select Microsoft Intune Enrollment. And this allows them to bypass MFA whenever they're doing this. In this particular case, 
so that it actually goes through without having some errors, which again, I'll reference at a later time. So just keep that in mind whenever you set up your policy. Either you're going to set one up that is basically saying that they can get into you know device here with Intune enrollment and you're including that and you are granting them controls but maybe requiring it to be hybrid Azure AD joined. The other piece is you could just do like what I mentioned. If you have a policy that is enforcing MFA on all cloud apps, you could exclude the Intune one here from the particular settings as well. So just keep that in mind. You'll see that again a little bit later here in the demo video, but those are all things that you want to check here within the particular environment. Next, we're going to pop into the domain controller here. There's a couple of things that we need to do. The first of which is configure the AD Connect wizard if you haven't already for hybrid deployment. So you want to start AD Connect here, and this will start your wizard. You can click on configure You'll click on Configure Device Options, click on Next. You see we have Hybrid Azure AD Join here. This is going to ask you to put in the Global Administrator Password for this particular account. And you click Next. That'll verify your credentials and also prompt you for MFA if it's an account enabled with MFA. So I'll prove that real quick here. Next thing we're going to say configure hybrid Azure AD join and you can leave this at Windows 10 or later. And we'll select our Active Directory here for Novacost in this case, this is the Active Directory of this customer. And for the Enterprise Admin creds, you should have those so you can put those in. And then when you're done there you can click on next. So this will actually go through and configure this um, from synchronizing your particular environment. The only other basic thing to keep in mind here, if you don't or aren't already syncing your computer objects from your local Active Directory, you'll just want to make sure that that's in place. You want to make sure that you're syncing those particular accounts as well, um, just so that you are actively getting those, because otherwise that, that what we just did there is not going to matter. So in the computer section here, make sure this OU is syncing up with all these devices that have been joined to this particular domain. Within your environment here, within the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, you'll start to see these devices come through and at first they'll be labeled hybrid Azure AD joined and they'll show the username applicable based off the user that's already syncing from 365. It'll be in a pending status here as well. You just gotta be patient with it. From my experience, it takes like 30 minutes to potentially even 45 minutes for that to fully come through with this being registered and showing this information. And then for MDM and compliancy, you won't see anything there. It'll just say NA for right now before we can configure the, the original rest of these settings here. So within this environment, again, this is back on the domain controller. There's a couple of things that we need to do and the basic premise here, I'll link this guy below. This is kind of outlining everything that I'm talking about here today. But essentially there's these ADMX templates that we need to install and have configured on the device itself here so that we can apply these via group policy to the devices that we want to enroll into Intune. So they have the different packages here depending on your build but they are um, retroactive and backwards compatible in that sense. So if you have even people just on 28H2, you could recommend going ahead and downloading those locally as well. So in this case, you'll follow this path here to get this installation after you've done it. And I've already done it here, so I'm not gonna reiterate those steps, but it's very simple in that you just install this and then it'll be located here. You'll copy it from this location. And then from there, what you'll do is go under your C drive, go to Windows, scroll down here to Sysfall, good again. And your path might look a little bit different here, but essentially we're getting to the domain, we're going to policies, and then we're gonna paste that folder that we copied into this particular section, and it'll be called policy definitions. After you're done with this, it's going to require a reboot of the domain controller. So you'll just want to prepare for that and have a window of time in which you do that. Whenever you reboot, 
we're going to go back into the group policy manager here and we are either going to edit the default domain policy or you can create your own group policy that you're going to scope to your POC users. Essentially though here you're going to go under edit, under policies, administrative templates, for computer configuration, we're going to go under Windows Components and then we're going to scroll down into the MDM section. And now, instead of just disable MDM enrollment, which was previously there before, you'll see this enable MDM enrollment for using default Azure AD creds. And when you click on enable here, you'll see that it lights up user credential and that's what we'll keep it at and we're not going to swing, change it to device credential. You'll click on apply and click on OK. And as long as you scope that to the correct devices here or users, then this will come down to that device itself. So let's pop into one so I can show you some of the additional follow-up that you probably see there and some troubleshooting that I ran into that I had to do as well. So we're here on a particular device that we've enrolled into the service that's domain joined as well too. One of the best tools you can start with is the command prompt here. And you could just simply type in dsregcmd forward slash status. And this will tell you the state of this enrollment in the sense of if it Azure AD joined, is it domain joined, and things of that nature. So those are things that you want to keep in mind uh, while you look for the status here. Like I said, this piece of it can take 30 minutes if you're not already familiar with how to enroll devices for hybrid join and haven't experienced that. Um, it was, it was uh, a process in which you have to learn that propagation time really of, of when that's occurring here as well. And so there's other things that you can look at here, but that's, that's basically the main piece that you wanna pay attention to when you're thinking about the hybrid join. The other piece here that we're sh reviewing for the information is under the event viewer. This is going to show us like failures in the auto enrollment for the MDM and things like that as well too. So whenever you click in here, you'll click under applications and service logs, or services logs. You'll click under Microsoft, under Windows, and you'll scroll down under the device management section here and click under admin. Now before, this is a device that's already enrolled, before you get here, you'll start off with most likely these 813s, which is basically saying that we haven't hit the auto enrollment registration yet coming through. Eventually though, after you know you start that process, you might start to get these 76 errors, the event ID with 76 uh, on it. And it'll say something along the lines of auto MDM enroll failed, and then give you some type of ambiguous, more so error message. And you can see all these ones as well here too, of which you didn't go through. A common reason for this is potentially that the credentials again are gated by MFA and you did not set up that conditional access policy. And so when this happens, eventually the user is gonna get a prompt to put in an MFA token and they'll be taken to the settings page here and under settings, it's going to be under system and shared experiences. This section will basically say there's something wrong here. We need to fix this. But also when they get the prompt here in the right hand corner, it'll take them to this page too. And then they'll be prompted to put in their MFA token and, and establish that. And that will complete this process from enrolling it into the MDM solution for auto enrollment purposes. So that's a big thing that you need to keep in mind here. Eventually though, what you'll see is a 75 event ID, which is saying that they ex the event succeeded. We auto enrolled the device and almost instantly you will see your compliance policies take effect. Like a good one is as far as an example goes is if you've enforced BitLock encryption and this device doesn't have BitLock encryption, you'll immediately see that prompt to encrypt the device um, from that log as well too. So keep that in mind. Um, the other reasons of which you might see this particular error is because you're enforcing the GPO, but you have not yet fully hybrid joined the device. It's not registered yet in that state. So a good thing to do there is to one look and make sure that this is set up so that it is showing as hybrid Azure AD joined and that that can be successfully you know, formulated into the um, device management center as well too, as far as showing that's hybrid join, showing that it's there. 
And then the other final piece is that obviously the UPNs, the sign-in credentials have to match in both local Active Directory and in Azure Active Directory. And that should be the case in, in a lot of the scenarios here as well too. But the basic one, I would say the most common one I ran into is the MFA registration, not having that in place or having the conditional access policy to bypass that. That's really what I would recommend in those cases for um, troubleshooting this and, and seeing those errors and things of that nature. So whenever you do enroll it, it'll eventually pop up here and it'll refresh and say it's enrolled into the Microsoft MDM solution so that you can then start pushing down policies and, and apps and all the other management configuration pieces that you can do within Endpoint Manager here um, under the Devices section in Windows Devices. So all of those things are everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this video. If there's any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll link this guide here for you guys, which kind of covers everything that I went through. Just has a little bit more on my exposure to this as well. Um, and the, otherwise, like I said, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.